Welcome, Andrew. How are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, it is time to get down to business and learn about the most common tropical and foliage plants. So why don't you share your screen and take it away and work your way through the alphabet in tropical and foliage plants. Maranta. This is also known as the prayer plant. At nighttime, the leaves will actually fold up like praying hands. Uh, it's a very easy to grow house plant with multiple uh, varieties with green, red, white, and yellow variegations. They'll grow to about a max of one feet tall. Make sure to avoid uh, direct light as you can get burned. And these are typically produced from cuttings. Monstera, this has been a real popular one over the last several years with variegated versions selling for hundreds of dollars per pot. It's also known as the split leaf philodendron. It is definitely a large pot variety. This is not something, the Monstera deliciosa, that you will want to put into small pots. It will quickly outgrow them. They prefer bright indirect light and are typically produced from seed. Noosa, also known as bananas, being used fairly frequently as uh, center items in combo pots. There's many varieties on the market from very short to very, very tall. Some even have some cold tolerance. They do have a very fast growth rate. They do prefer direct sun. And typically, you'll get these produced from tissue culture. Not all varieties will have edible fruit. Peperomias are another nice small plant variety. There's over a thousand known species of peperomias. Typically, they are grown just for their foliage. They will flower, but the foliage is the most attractive part is a very hardy house plant, prefers medium to bright light, and it's produced from cuttings. Philodendrons. There are both philodendrons that are vining varieties and non-vining varieties. Uh, they typically have a fairly fast growth rate, perform best in partial sunlight. The vining Varieties are typically produced from cuttings, and the non-binding varieties are typically produced from tissue culture. So one of the most common uh, non-binding varieties is the philodendron birkin. And the one you see here in the photo is a vining variety that is philo Brazil. Formiums. Formiums are typically used as a landscape plant, not as much as an indoor plant. They do prefer full sun locations in cooler environments, um, but in warmer environments, they are going to prefer some afternoon shade. Typically grown for its gorgeous foliage, although it does produce a flower. And these are produced by dividing clumps. This is a very common uh, plant used in the landscape in California. Pilea, who hadn't seen the peperomoides in the last few uh, years? Um, obviously the most uh, popular one <laughs> recently, but there are over 600 varieties available. They rarely will flower in indoor settings, typically very easy to grow prefer medium to bright light, and are typically produced from offshoots. Roeo. This is a favorite of mine, also known as the oyster plant. It is grown for its stunning variegated foliage. It prefers bright indirect light will grow to about a max of 15 inches tall and then will continue to just spread wide. 
very, very easy to produce. And this one is typically produced from cuttings. Sansevierias. This is another one I think everybody watching this video has probably owned one at some point in their life, may own one right now. It's also known as the snake plant. They are very easy to grow. There's varieties that range from six inches tall all the way up to eight feet tall. They will thrive in bright light, but can tolerate many lighting conditions. And these are typically produced from divisions. Chefleras are also known as the umbrella tree. There's over 600 species of Chefleras. There's varieties that are both dwarf as well as large. They prefer bright indirect light. And you'll typically get these produced either from cuttings or from air layers. Skindapsis, also known as pothos. Uh, it's a vining plant with many different variegations. They're very easy to produce, prefer bright indirect light. And these are all typically produced from cuttings. This is one that you will get a lot of the stem cuttings um, you will not be necessarily getting this as all tip cuttings. Secrecia, purple queen, uh, used both as a bedding plant as well as a house plant with a beautiful purple color to its leaves, typically grown for the leaves and not for its flowers, which are small violet to pink flowers, but rather insignificant. Very, very easy to produce. This thing will root just looking at soil. Uh, they prefer bright light, and it is typically produced from cuttings. Spathophyllum, very, very common houseplant, also known as the peace lily. There's varieties ranging from one feet to four feet in height. They are relatively easy to produce. They need bright, indirect light. And you'll find that most varieties of spath are produced from tissue culture, although there are some seed varieties on the market. Syngonium, also known as the arrowhead vine. This is one of the uh, most common varieties, white butterfly. It's a rather quick grower. Uh, there are other varieties with differing colors and variegations to the leaves. Relatively easy to produce. They like bright indirect light and typically you'll find that syngoniums are going to be produced from tissue culture. Tradescantia, another great houseplant hanging basket item. There's over 75 different species, very rapid growth rate. They are extremely easy to produce. You'll uh, often find them rooting under the benches where somebody's accidentally broke off a piece of the plant. Um, they're very suited to hanging containers due to the trailing nature. They prefer bright indirect light. And these are typically produced from cuttings. The last one on my list are Zamiococcus, also known as the ZZ plant. They are very low maintenance. They're tolerant of extremely low light environments. They're highly drought tolerant. Um, typically they're produced by division or cutting. Uh, they can even be produced by leaf cuttings where just a leaf is stuck in the soil and a plant will root and grow from it. This is a really, really durable plant and uh, will work well in many different uh, environments within the house. So this is a quick, <laughs> somewhat quick overview of uh, some of the most common genera in the tropical foliage side of things. Well, and it's been a, a fantastic overview. I've seen a lot in there that uh, I've seen at, at garden centers. Um, 
with very, you know, very healthy price tags on them. Uh, plenty in there that I've had in my own house, a few I have currently. And uh, it, it's really been fun to, to take a look at some of those. Um, I mean, you talked about plants that are extremely trendy right now, plants with multiple color and variegation options talked about some stinky plants which is always uh, a fun a fun topic of conversation um plants for indoor and outdoor use plants with cold tolerance and uh even a plant that you didn't recommend eating so now you know i want to try a diefenbachia have you ever have you ever tried to to eat a diefenbachia cane no i just heard that it does not go well (laughs) probably probably a good decision well Andrew, thank you so much for this this good rundown of A to Z genera of tropicals and foliage. I really appreciate it. It's great being here today. So we're going to wrap it up. I am Bill Calkins with Tech on Demand, wishing you all the best as you pick and choose your way through uh, what seemed to be an almost endless uh, opportunity to select tropical and foliage plants for your production mix. Hopefully this has helped you... Uh, uh, make make a little bit of sense of this giant catalog available um, in plants that, that you can produce in a, a timely manner in the conditions and production environments that you can that you can achieve in your greenhouse and with uh, some knowledge of, of what consumers want these days. So uh, like I said in the introduction, the the trends change quickly. So I encourage you to, Pay attention to to the hot plants out there and uh, and move quick to bring some of those into production. So on behalf of Andrew and uh, everyone at Ball who's working on the tropical plant market, we appreciate your business and support and take care out there.